Do you sharpen your chain by yourself or do you have it done by a pro? Alrighty, the first thing we do is loosen these two nuts that hold the bar locked in place and the clutch cover on. I like to use a real socket tool, ratchet, spin off the nuts by hand once they're loose. It does come with a little T-tool with the socket and screwdriver thingy, but I prefer to use the real deal. And pop off the clutch cover, slide the bar back, and carefully get the chain off because it's still sharp. The teeth are still really sharp. And be careful you don't want to tangle it up because they are no fun to untangle if they get twisted. And there's the chain. I like to pull the bar off and of course clean everything up normally. Clean out the clutch cover and clean off the bar and flip it over the other direction. That way you get even wear on both sides. I grew up in a jack-of-all-trades kind of family. My grandfather was a big influencer on me. He was, uh, you know, the farm boy. And we worked on at uh, things in the wintertime, and we fixed and repaired everything when we couldn't be outside doing, doing what we were supposed to do. So we repaired mowers and tillers and tractors and trailers and all kinds of equipment. We tore everything apart. We did everything ourselves, and I've kind of carried that tradition from my grandfather to myself of doing stuff myself. So sharpening a chainsaw blade on my own is just something that makes sense to be doing it to me. So I did buy this electric sharpener. Doing it by hand is just a real hassle, and doing it with this is a, is a really easy piece of cake, which you'll see in a couple of minutes here. We'll just get to it and sharpen the chainsaw blade, that Pool and Pro chainsaw that we bought. I've used it for three or four tanks of gas and it's starting to get dull. I like to sharpen my blades, my chainsaw, you know, the blades, um, the chains, before they get, you know, when they just start to show signs of getting dull and slow. If you use them till they're all bent and dinged and really junk, it's really hard to sharpen them. It's better to just sharpen them every so often and keep them you know, a good edge on them. It just takes a couple of seconds. And you can do it by hand, but what I found for myself is you sharpen one side and then to sharpen the other side by hand, you can never quite get them exactly the same. And then when your saw cuts, it wants to go at an angle where using the saw or grinder like this, it just takes a few seconds and you can do both sides exactly the same and it's a piece of cake. So I've got this little table here. We bought it at an auction. It's an office table with casters and I put a piece of um, OSB on it and bolted it down. And then I mounted my grinder to this. And then I've got a, a re regular grinder back here on the other side with the two wheels, a, a coarse and a fine. And fire that up a second. Make sure my shirt sleeve's not in it. And that's the regular grinder. And it has a light on it, and so I kind of, ooh, that's hot. <laughs> so I'm using that light on my, uh, see there's the light right there, to shine down on my chain. So, all right, well, let's get to it. I did find the box. It's a little beat up and dirty, but here's the box that the sharpener came in. So you got your X coordinates that tightens the chain back and forth. And then your Y coordinate, this rotates for the cut on the blade. This one's 30 degrees, so this is your Y direction. 30 on one side, and then it'd be 30 for the other side. Lock it in place. Then your Z direction is the angle of the stone that cuts down. So it comes down to get the sharp angle on the edge of the 
chain to. So X, Y, and Z. Bet you never thought you were going to need any of that algebra or geometry stuff for sharpening chainsaws on the homestead, did ya? So drop the chain in place and it slides back and forth and you lock that little bar behind the chain tooth and lock it over. See that holds it in place there, that's tight. It can't move. A little bit hot out today for Bonnie. She's taking a little siesta. <laughs> I like to mark one tooth with the magic marker so I know where I'm starting. I mean, you can tell which tooth is sharp, but that just makes it a lot easier. And you just start sharpening. I'll do this one a little extra just so you can see it. And loosen it, slide it. Now that's one tooth, but that's the wrong one because that's going the other way. So you slide it a second tooth. Hit it with the sharpener. Then you just keep doing this. Every other tooth, sharpen. And it's really fast. Lock, sharpen, unlock, rotate, lock, sharpen, and around and around we go. Now this chain is just your basic cut chain. It's nothing fancy. Oh, we're back to the start. So now we loosen the nut underneath. This is our, our Y component. Then we spin it over to 30 degrees the other direction. So we can cut the other half of the teeth, sharpen them. So now we move it one spot, lock her in place, and check. Sometimes you have to adjust it because it's the way the chain sits. It's just a little bit off. So we'll just tighten this up just to take a hair more off. Tiny bit. And there we go. So we're good to do the other side. So that's where we started. Lock it in place. Cut it. And keep going around. Now again, this is just the basic chain. This 18-inch bar, this chain, it only has 21 teeth on it which really isn't very many teeth. 21 is not much. So it doesn't take long at all to get them all sharpened up. Most chains, a pro quality chain, has 36 teeth. So 21 on this basic chain. So the teeth are really far apart, so it doesn't cut very fast. It's a slow cutter. Where again, a professional chain is going to have around 36 teeth. And we're back to the beginning. So now we just take our chain out, and there it is. All the teeth are sharp. We sharpened one side, then spun it the other way and sharpened the other side. Now we put it back on around the clutch, guide it down through the top of the bar. Just take your time. Now the chain's really sharp because you've sharpened up all the teeth. So feed it around the bar. Get it up in the groove. In the track in the bar. There you go. A little extra crud there. Now your clutch cover, you've got to slide the little lock and gizmo. You gotta loosen it up. There's a little pin it slips into a little round hole in the bottom of the chain bar. So you got to make sure make sure everything lines up, get the cover on there. Make sure the little prongy thing from the adjuster fits in and then pops on. And you just put them back on here, these two nuts, just real loose. You don't want them very tight at all, just enough to hold the cover in place. So 
So just finger tight, if even that. Now you take your little screwdriver and you turn it in the adjuster and you it sucks the chain up into the bar. Get it up in there the right tension. Then give it a little run the bars upside down like I said before and the next time when I change the chain sharpen it I'll flip the bar the other way see the chains a little loose and after you so we'll tighten it up here again and then after you use the chain for five or ten minutes it's a good idea to check it because it may need to be tightened up again then give it a good snuggin Let's tighten these nuts right down snug with the ratchet and socket or if you used a little tool whatever so now it's in good shape and it's kind of snug there and we're good to go let's give her a test and see how she works yeah so this tree fell down the other day we had a good wind storm the trees die and then the ants and termites and things eat them around the base and they sort of hollow it out and rot it right close to the ground then a good wind comes and knocks them right over so this is a nice dry dead oak tree and if I don't chop it up it's just gonna rot to pieces so I might as well be using it for firewood and again this is just the basic chainsaw so it cuts slow the pro one would just drop down through this like butter but with only 21 teeth on this chain and it's not a high horsepower engine it's, it's just really for trimming and little stuff but hey it's working great right down through the log I don't have to worry about damaging the good saw if I accidentally bump something that you're not supposed to be bumping let's do one more here There we go. We got us some firewood. It just took a couple minutes. My helper, Bonnie. She's always making sure I do everything just right. <laughs> Good doggy. So one of the things that my uh, grandpa taught me was to, you know, always maintain your equipment. So a big part of being self-sufficient and self-reliant on your homestead or wherever is to take care of your tools and your equipment. And you know, when you use things during the season, sometimes you gotta do just kind of quickie fixes and things and keep things, you know, briefly maintained. And then in the winter time or if you have a seasonal, you know, when you have a break, it's good to just go over everything, like your rotor tillers and your lawn mowers and your tractors and things don't just put stuff away and then hope that it works next spring when you go to get it out if you always maintain your stuff while you're using it then it will last longer and you'll get more mileage out of it so here's to living happy fun loving and carefree being a jack of all trades doing things that yourself being independent and ooh, a little breeze blowing it is so warm here today it's like 72 degrees we just had that polar vortex the other day and now we're like I'm, I'm sweating in this this flannel shirt so share this with your friends if they have a chainsaw you know they do a little bit of clearing of their property maybe firewood maybe just you know clearing out brush and debris whatever share it so you can help somebody else out. Happy, fun-loving, and carefree. Living life, doing it yourself.